What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is David. So what's the best permalink structure for any type of blog, information oriented style website? That's what I wanna cover in this video. So permalink is short for permanent link and it just means the URL structure of your website and blog. And it's something that you really wanna take into deep consideration when starting your website because permanent means like you shouldn't be changing this later on. Now, technically you can, and I will show you the correct way to do so if you did make a mistake, or perhaps you have a website that just grew and you outgrew the URL structure you're currently using. But in general, you wanna pick the right permalink from the beginning and not change it later on, if at all possible. Next, you wanna make sure that you have SEO friendly permalinks. And in my opinion, there's five main things that you wanna make sure you take care of. Number one, make sure you include your target keyword in the URL structure. Now, I think this is something that most people kind of already know, but the common mistake I always see is that someone will create a post title and then we'll take that entire post title and have it as the URL structure, and then it's just way too long and clunky. For example, on davidyuki.com, I have davidyuki.com slash creates a website. And then the post title is create a website, step one to step done, et cetera. You don't need to have the entire post title in the URL structure. It doesn't need to be davidyuki.com slash how to create a website, step one, two, step done. Like that is way too long and clunky. You just wanna make sure that you narrow down your URL structure just to the focus keyword of what you're going after. Number two is to use hyphens and not underscores. So this comes directly from Google. So when you're creating a blog post like davidyuki.com slash create a website, you wanna make sure that you separate the words using a hyphen and not an underscore. Another aspect of creating SEO friendly permalinks is just to make sure that your website is secure. So again, Google looks at an entire website as well as blog posts and your blog posts and your entire website should be using HTTPS, not HTTP, <laughs> that's a mouthful. So all web posts nowadays provide an SSL certificate free with your purchase of any hosting account. So this is really not an issue. And there's also a service called Let's Encrypt, which provides a free SSL certificate that you can use for your website if it comes to that. But honestly, any type of web post you're using like SiteGround, Bluehost, Hostinger, Name Hero, et cetera, they're going to provide you a secure uh, HTTPS website via an SSO certificate. So just make sure that everything's working correctly and also make sure that your HTTP version is redirecting to the HTTPS version. It should, but you just wanna make sure and double check this with your web post. Next up, avoid having extensions at the end of your URL structure. So sometimes you'll see like blogger.com will have the dot HTML at the end of the URL structure. That's okay, but like when possible, you wanna avoid having .html or any other type of extension at the end of the URL structure. If you're blogging with WordPress or ghost.org, this is not an issue. And last, make sure you use a custom structure appropriate for the type of website you're building. So if you're creating a news-oriented website, you're going to want a different permalink structure than say like a blog that's gonna have like 150 to 300 blog posts and that type of website's gonna have a different permalink structure than a website that's going to be having like 2000 something blog posts, et cetera. So that's what I'm gonna cover in this video. So let's get to it. All right, so the first SEO friendly permalink structure is post title. So that's website.com slash post title. Now this structure is ideal for most information, websites, blogs, et cetera, that are under 1000 blog posts. And like I said in the beginning that you don't need to include your entire post title in the URL structure. So if you're creating a blog post on like how to start a blog quick and easy, the entire URL doesn't need to be how to start a blog quick and easy. You can just narrow it down to start a blog or how to start a blog. Again, focus the URL on the key word. And this structure is really nice, clean, and simple for any type of information-oriented website. The only cons of this permalink structure are that it's not ideal if you're creating an e-commerce style website where you're going to have a store and a wide variety of other features because then your blog posts end up just being like random pages on the website. You don't want your store.com slash post title. That just looks a little weird because you have a broad store. So you're gonna have like mystore.com slash product and slash product title, et cetera. So you wanna kind of organize your blog to be a little bit separate from the core offering of your website. And post title is also not ideal if you're creating a really massive information website 
with thousands and thousands of blog posts. The blog prefix is the next SEO friendly permalink structure. So what I specifically mean is having something like website.com slash blog slash post title. This is a pretty good URL structure overall and is comparable to post title. So if you're creating like a blog or an information website and you wanna go with post title or slash blog slash post title, both are fine. I haven't noticed like a radical difference between one or the other, but if your website has some type of like main offering that's completely different from the blog, you definitely wanna separate the blog post using the slash blog slash post title permalink structure. Like say you're an agency, for example, and you're offering like web design or something like that, and you're blogging on the side for content marketing purposes, then yeah, break up the structure with slash blog slash post title. This also applies to any type of e-commerce website as well. Like I said before, because you don't want just the post title because then it looks like just a random page on your website. You wanna be able to separate the blog post from the core offering of the website. Now, the only kind about this URL structure is that it does make URLs a little bit needlessly long, and depending on the length of your domain name, it just may get a little bit unwieldy. So, for example, when I was blogging at websitecreativepro.com, it was slash blog slash post title, and that's a really long URL. Websitecreativepro.com slash blog, like rolls off the tongue great. <laughs> Next up is the category prefix. So website.com slash category slash post title. This URL structure is awesome for any type of large information website. We're talking like a website with well over a thousand blog posts and multiple categories or an e-commerce style website. So maybe you don't wanna use slash blog slash post title. You can switch it up and use slash category slash post title if you wanna go that route. And so that's the advantage of using the category. It's ideal for just large information websites or if you have an e-commerce website and you don't wanna use slash blog in your post title. The only con for this URL structure is that it really is ideal for like a large information website or an e-commerce website. So you really need to be planning ahead to create a large information website. It's not ideal if you have like 100 blog posts, 200 blog posts, then just stick to post title or slash blog slash post title. But if you know that you're going to be hiring a team of writers and you're going to be creating a very large information website, then you maybe want to consider breaking everything up with slash category slash post title. And again, if you have an e-commerce website and you want to mix it up a little bit, instead of going with slash blog, you can go with slash category, et cetera. Dates in your permalink structure are completely unnecessary and you should avoid dates at all costs unless you're creating time sensitive content. So it's pretty simple. If you're creating a news oriented website or you're creating any type of content that's time sensitive, then yes, having dates in the URL structure makes a lot of sense. But for all other use cases, dates is one of the worst permalink structures that you can pick. All right, with that out of the way, let me answer some frequently asked questions regarding permalink. Should I be using blog as a subdomain for my online store? So the quick answer is no. So you wanna be using something like mystore.com slash blog slash post title. That's the ideal structure as opposed to blog.mystore.com, which is a subdomain name. Now subdomain names are really helpful because they do help separate services that are completely different from one another. That's why we have maps.google.com because the map function is totally, completely different from everything else that Google has to offer. But for your like online store, as an example, the goal of a blog in content marketing is to get organic search traffic, build domain name authority, and then convert that traffic in some meaningful way. And you're really just hampering your efforts by using a subdomain. So is using the blog and category prefix to together a good idea so you end up with a permalink structure where it's like mywebsite.com slash blog slash category slash post title. No, that's needlessly long. I definitely would pick either blog slash post title or category slash post title or if your website's large enough category subcategory post title just because what is most helpful for the end visitor. Having something like blog slash category slash post title is just a little clunky for the end visitor. Should I strip the category from my URL structure? So when you're using an SEO plugin like Yoast or Rank Math with WordPress, you're able to strip the category base. Now I should take a step back and say that when you're creating a blog post on almost any platform, whether it's Ghost, Wix, Squarespace, WordPress, etc., you have to organize those blog posts within categories. Then you end up with category pages. So the way WordPress handles this is that you have website.com slash category slash post title. And if you're using something like uh, slash blog slash post title, your category base will be website.com slash blog slash category slash category title, et cetera. And that's really helpful for the end visitor, search engines, et cetera, because it helps separate your category pages from your blog post pages 
So if we take a look at like Adam Enfroy's website, who has a really massive website, but he has a category called how to make money online. And he also has a blog post called how to make money online. And he's currently stripping the category base on his website. And so you're, and he's ending up with two pages that are both titled how to make money online, going after like a very similar search term. Now, Google is pretty sophisticated and will you typically get the right piece of content uh, correct, like which one should be indexed for that specific key phrase. But why make it complicated? Just keep the category base in my opinion. Now, it's not the end of the world if you wanna strip it because it's just strictly for aesthetic reasons, but I personally like having my category pages, pages, blog posts, et cetera, all be separated because they are functionally different. How do you change your permalink structure if you made a mistake? Now, if you have a brand new website and you're getting a few visitors a day, it's not a big deal to change your permalink structure to something else. But if you have an established website that's over a year old and you're getting significant amount of traffic, like I would say like 500 visitors a day, it is a little bit risky to change the permalink structure. But if you're dead set, if you really did make a mistake, maybe you're using dates in your blog structure and you wanna change it to slash post title or whatever, I'm gonna show you how in this section. So let's jump into my laptop and begin. Welcome to my laptop, let's begin. So the current URL structure I have on my tutorial website is slash blog slash uh, post title. So let's just say, I wanna switch this back to like post title. Let's say like the website's existed for like a year. I don't like having blog in the URL. I wanna make it just post title. How do you do that? Now, step one is to navigate back to your WordPress dashboard. Come over here to settings, navigate down to permalinks, and over here is where you can change things. So if you just click on post name, and then navigate over here and click on save changes, WordPress will automatically redirect the blog post. So we'll take this, okay? So I took that, copied it, I'm gonna hit enter, and it should automatically redirect to just slash post title. Let's go ahead and see, and there we go. So again, like WordPress is sophisticated enough where they know people are gonna change the permalinks and they automatically create redirect links. And that's really it, that's as simple as that. But there are a few other technical details if you really want to know, if you want to nerd out and get into a little bit more details. So uh, first off, let's navigate over here to our plugin section. And then within plugins, I want you to add in a plugin called Redirect. So we go over here, Redirection. Actually, let me go ahead and add new. And we'll type in Redirection. And this plugin right here by John Godley. And you want to go ahead and install this one because this allows you to set up redirects for your website. And this is just useful if you just change like a blog post title, you want to redirect an old blog post title to a new blog post title. Uh, but it also allows you the ability to change permalinks. Anyway, so if we go over here to settings, once you install and activate it, navigate over here to settings and or sorry, not settings, tools. And then you want to see where it says redirection and go ahead and click this on. function right here is where you can add in a blog post. So say if you change the name of the blog post, if I change this, for example, like from hello world to, uh, I don't know, hello world, good morning. <laughs> Let's say that as an example, uh, I can come over here and add in source URL, URL, hello world, target URL, hello world, good morning. And it'll automatically redirect, which is important because if you're moving, changing blog post titles, so we're going to navigate over here to sites and then you scroll down a little bit and then you have permalink migration. Now again, WordPress should automatically change uh, the permalink and have a 301 redirect set up automatically. But if you want to do it manually, here you go. So you have the permalink migration and you can add in the permalink. And again, enter old permalink structures to automatically migrate them to the current ones. So whatever your old structure was, input it here. And so again, you find your old structure by navigating over here to the permalink section. And then you take this item right there, for example, we have like post name and we'll say like the old structure that I was using was slash blog slash post name. You can add in the permalink and now it will automatically redirect that. Again, it should already be working. Now, another thing you can take notes of is this helpful tool that Yoast provides. So they have yoast.com slash research slash permalink helper. And right here, you can put in the URL of your website. So we'll take that, and we'll copy this, navigate over here, and put that in right there. And then is your WordPress running on a subfolder? So did you install it on slash blog? No, we didn't. And web server is running Apache, most likely if you're using any standard web host. And then what's the old permalink structure? We'll say I had like 
we're using months. So we'll click on months, then we'll click on generate redirect. All right, so now it's created this redirect. Now again, I just wanna emphasize, WordPress should automatically do this for you, but just in case it doesn't, you're having some weird issue, Again, the way you check is just to navigate to the blog post and just make sure that the blog post is redirecting correctly to the correct URL structure. But anyways, so now we have this redirect right here. You can take this entire thing, redirect, blah, blah, blah. Uh, this is will this is something that you want to put in your HT access. Now you're like an HT access file. Where, what is that? Where do I get that? That's something that's in your file manager within your hosting account. So this site is currently being hosted by Bluehost. And if you want to navigate to your file manager, uh, most shared web hosts are going to be kind of functionally similar. Anyways, navigate over here for advanced. Let's click on that and let that load. All right. And we want to scroll down a little bit and want to find where it says file manager. And this is the kind of C panel. Now with this over here, we have to first click on settings. Why settings? Because we want to show hidden files. Typically your HC access file is going to be a hidden file. So you have to click on this, show hidden files. We'll click on that and there we go. And then we have this down here, HD access, there we go. And we'll click on this and then we can save that to our desktop. All right, and now we have the HD access file. We can open up this in a notepad if you want. Uh, so we'll go ahead, do that. You paste in your redirect right there, then you save it, and then you re-upload it back to the website. And it's as simple as that. And so that's all you really need to know for setting up redirections for the permalink structure. Again, I don't wanna make it too confusing. In general, all you have to do is navigate the settings, permalink, and then change the permalink setting. Let's let it load actually, setting links. There we go. Ah, there we go. Again, keep it simple. If you had a structure already, you can just jump in here, change it, click on save, and WordPress should automatically redirect everything as appropriate. And you can double check that by making sure that the old URL structure redirects to the new URL structure. And if you need really technical help, maybe just reach out to your web host and have them update the HD access file themselves if you want. But again, this should just work out of the box. All right, everyone, that's it for this video on the best SEO friendly permalink structures for blogs. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you got something out of it. If you did, consider subscribing and hit that like button. My name is David. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.